Remember, there's meant to be five seasons of this series. This is only the first season. Half a billion dollars of our money wasted on this production. I also I want to thank uh, every Amazon employee and every Amazon customer because you guys paid for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Edwin Starr, the late great Motown singer, who once sang an unreleased song called The Price of Pain. I've met Edwin Starr. I met him back in the late 90s on a karaoke TV show here in England called Night Fever, hosted by Suggs from Madness. It was a great time. I actually won the competition, believe it or not. Uh, if you, if you want to know who I am, I'm wearing a gold lame suit all the way through. It's hilarious. And uh, yeah, I met uh, Edwin Starr backstage with Terry Venables. And uh, it was great, man. Both gentlemen were really, really cool. I, I enjoyed their company. We just had the brief chat, but yeah, the reason why I mentioned Edwin Starr, I mean, it has nothing to do with the video I'm about to react to, except for the sentiment, which is basically, the price of pain and yeah we are about to pay for it folks because about two and a half hours ago this dropped I mean I should have seen it coming right San Diego Comic Con uh, from what I've heard and from what I've seen on various live streams a couple of hours ago uh, basically somebody walked in and they actually saw a stand for LGBT content. I just thought, are you kidding me? This is probably one of the reasons why nobody wants to go. Warner Brothers haven't turned up for Comic-Con this year, or they might have a very limited coverage because, can you imagine Warner Brothers turning up anyway if they change their minds? All questions will be about Ezra Miller and the future of The Flash. He ain't got a future, trust me. Not while he's helming that film. So Warner Brothers aren't there. It seems the other major companies aren't there. Comic-Con used to be about comics and everything comic book related. Obviously, when the Marvel films started getting big from 2008, they changed the whole landscape of what Comic-Con is going to be. But you know what, guys? I am digressing. You are here to watch my reaction the full trailer, folks, it is here. The Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power. Please cue the fart sound right now. Hello, this is your television speaking. Let's push the button marked idiot and see what comes out. We thought it might actually help if I had sound. <laughs> Let's do that again. The war. War. What the is war, it good war. for? At last, was ended. So wait a second. She's putting the last skull there, right? I'm presuming this is of the orcs, uh, or these are dead fallen soldiers. So she's like, uh, yeah, that's my last piece. See, I'm done now. Let's brush my hands off and uh, be Galadriel. Was ended. Oh, bloody hell, my whole TV vibrated. Our days of peace begin. We thought our joys would be unending. We thought our light would never dim. And guess what? It's about to. <laughs> Lenny Henry, you're not fooling anyone, mate. You just hear Galadriel. Oh, oh God. Evil does not sleep. It waits. Beyond the darkness, tilt in shadow, to bury us all beneath the mountain. So, so far we've had a war, then there's a momentary lapse of peace, and now we've got the mention of Sauron's name being mentioned and the poor kid is terrified. Um, the one thing I'm going to say about this show, I mean this show, this trailer so far, 
It's blowing really more cold than hot. Not that I would expect it to blow any other way, although it could just blow personally. Um, again, it's very clean looking. It's very CW. There are some bits of dirt and grime here and there, but it's not much to make me go. It's not lived in. It's not a worn out kind of look like we saw in the Peter Jackson OG Tolkien adaptations back in the early noughts. I'm assuming the creature with the uh, claws is another form of Sauron. No, not Sauron, the Balrog. That's who I'm thinking of. So the Balrog can take many forms um, as a demonic presence. So I think that could be another version of Balrog. Find the light and the shadow will not find <laughs> She's probably referring to the demonic presence I was talking about. Oh, this is so... The dialogue is so cringe, isn't it? Oh my God. Together we can survive this. Wait a minute. Am I seeing female warriors here? Let's have a look. It's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, they're female warriors. I can just about make them out that they are. Yep, there's 12 years a slave, dude. Sorry, 12 years an elf. <laughs> no, I can't fall in love with you. Oh, it's Leah Thomas. I mean, it's Galadriel, Olympic swimmer. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 did they? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if they would have done that back then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> if this were a comedy, I would say this would be like the greatest comedy ever. Oh no, not another Lord of the Rings movie. That would have been a great title for this show. And I tell you what, if this was going for absolute comedic laughs, this would be better than S freaking L right now. Eventually one or the other. I'll surely break. I am going to awaken the beast. Oh, and look at that. It's in English. It's in Arabic, Hindi. I'm assuming that's what that is. Okay. They're trying to appeal to the world over. We've got a bit more to come, folks. Oh, hello, Barrow. How are you, matey? Well, and that's it, folks. That is two minutes. Actually, no, I, I lie. It's a three minute trailer. Well, probably two minutes uh, if you cut out that Amazon, that weird new blue Amazon logo. Um, what did you think, folks? I'm still not bloody sure what's going on. I mean, I've paused. It looks a bit like Paul Bettany, doesn't it? That's who I was thinking of. Um, but it's it, look. You could throw all the dirt on their faces. You could do this, you could do that. Is this making me want to be compelled to like this show or to want to watch it? Not really. I said to you before, I love the Peter Jackson films, Fellowship of the Ring. I probably watch more than the other sequels. I mean, I do like the Twin Towers. I do love Return of the King. Like the director's four hour cut is way more faster moving than Avengers Endgame. That'll probably tell you something how great that trilogy and that movie is. I mean, 
I'm just a, a lost. I'm, I'm at a loss for words with this. To, if I've got to be really honest, I mean, holy crap, man. It's like I'm watching this. It's a series of vignettes. You've got Galadriel, powerful swimming girl. You know, she's the she's going to be first on the, on the team to to get to the other side. And uh, yeah, Barog of Mormia. OK, we saw him. I'm still going to call him a him. And uh, yeah, I mean, this all looks pretty, but it looks Oh, she's drawing a sword again. Galadriel is not about drawing a sword. She's a powerful woman. She's ethereal. She's beautiful. She can look at men and put fear into them straight away. She doesn't need a weapon to do that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we know this is like the other iteration of Galadriel and they're going to do what they want, whatever. No one cares. Um, and it really does. It does echo like the way this trailer ends. It really echoes that it's going to be the next Game of Thrones. Well, I haven't even seen House of the Dragon or the trailer yet. I don't want to watch that because I've just heard some terrible things already about that show, what they've done to make a few, shall we say, a POC changes. Um, I just, I'm just not down with that shit at all. It's just, I just find it so egregious. But holy hell, man, like, yeah, I... It's really funny because this trailer is trying to present the best version of what they want fans to enjoy but there's still a lot of heavy messaging within this trailer as well i'm kind of getting fed up with seeing this kind of stuff and look this is a pale version of what we've seen in the peter jackson films isn't it i mean again this series what is it 10 episodes half a billion dollars of our hard-earned money that have gone towards this i mean what does that tell you and uh i guess if it was going for the real the real um, meat and bones of uh, Game of Thrones. They would have thrown in nudity, um, everything that you can throw at the kitchen sink. But you know, this is a fantasy. It's not what J.R.R. Tolkien uh, um, basically uh, approved of or would use, you know, because he wasn't that kind of guy. And uh, yeah, do you see what I mean? You know, and uh, this character here, it, they've changed her completely from what she is in the Silmarillion. So. You know, I mean, it's 2022, it's Hollywood folks, they're too afraid to make normal films again, to make normal TV shows. They're so afraid of offending that the ironic thing is, they're actually offending people who don't know about this, they're insulting people like me, who appreciate good entertainment and great pop culture, and... Uh, <sighs> <laughs> this is a disaster it's 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 a it's a dead man it's a dead man slash woman whatever walking this really is um i'm, I'm be curious to see how this does in its uh, first probably the f i think in the first season amazon will probably claim oh well it had more viewing figures than jack reacher and it had more viewing figures than the terminal list um and the funny thing is i mentioned those last two shows good old-fashioned entertainment and doesn't insult the audience's intelligence but this i think they're going to see a massive backlash now before i sign off today folks let's check out the comment section now at the time of making this video i'll tell you what i'm just going to refresh it and see what happens because we like the refresh button don't we Oh my god, you saw that before your very eyes. Look at that, 3,000 dislikes, 2,300 likes. So the dislikes are already eclipsing this. Um, there's my comment right there. Um, okay, so let's go to Villa 132. House of the Dragon is going to show what sticking to law and faithfulness to fans, characters and story can do. Uh, no, that's um, unless they're being sarcastic, I don't know. Um, I'm going to be that guy, but the Balrog didn't come out to attack the dwarves until way after this period in time. Confused um, how they are going to reconcile that. Uh, the answer is John Allen, they're not. It's just going to happen and it'll just carry on. Um, it definitely looks better than I imagined. Uh, I have played Shadow of Mordor, read The Hobbit, watched The Hobbit and the trilogy. <coughs> But if people say that this is very good, only then I will watch it. Already has his doubts. Interesting. Uh, cannot wait to see this. Okay. The Dark Lord Sauron is terrifying even more than one short frame. No, the Dark Lord Sauron, Hex Red, is more terrifying than the whole idea of this show even put together. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm not going to say any more because... 
I think probably some of those comments are probably reimagined bots from Amazon themselves and have just gone in there to try to calm the storm that is brewing below, but who knows? But that's it, folks. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, one of the worst titled titles I've seen for a TV show. I have no hope for it. Morford Clark, like I said, oh man, she's a stone cold fox. But she's not my Galadriel. Kate Blanchett forever will be my Galadriel. You know, I've got her. I've got Liv Tyler as Arwen. What more could I need, right, folks? So on that one, if you enjoyed this trailer today, and I was just about to hit the hey, a uh hey, hey, and then this trailer popped up, and I thought, oh, God. With the earlier thing that I did of the um, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, um, that was before I was about to crack on with work. And I'll say about that trailer very quickly. Yeah, I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons uh, expert. I'm not, I don't know the law. Um, and there was a comment I wanted to address that um, a really good subscriber of mine, the emotionally unstable amphibian, he said it just looks like a Marvel movie. And I get his point because there are parts of that trailer that it kind of looks like it's trying to ape a Marvel movie. It is a Paramount production. Paramount did make the earlier Marvel movies. So I get where he was coming from on that one. And yes, there's a little bit of wisecracking back and forth. But at this stage, I will say that, and people are saying it looks a bit like Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but a, a friend of mine actually asked me for my opinion about the trailer. And he said to me, if you do know D&D, then what they're trying to do in that trailer is to really appease to the fans. So the woman who I called the, the thief, uh, Stella or Sheila was it, the redhead that I kind of find is cute. Um, she actually isn't that character at all. And I missed it in the trailer where she transforms into different beasts. So I completely got that wrong. But somebody in my comment section said as well that the cartoon characters that I was riffing off from might make an appearance in the film anyway. So if that happens, that would be pretty awesome. The only thing I'll say about that D&D trailer is that I don't get a sense of what is actually going on. Why do these characters suddenly appear? Is it going to be one of these things where it's, it's like a bit like a, a meta take where they're based in the world that they, they don't know is actually a, a fantasy world, but on the, on the other side of the coin, they're actually a real tabletop players playing these characters, but we're watching it through the eyes of the characters. Do you see what I mean? Anyway, folks, went off on a tangent, but I just wanted to say, have a good evening, have a good weekend, and if I were you, I would check me out on the next video. Infect Sam. Infect Sam. And I'm here with the Fellowship of Influencers. Representative, because we're getting like more diversity within this series. Like Representative, because we're getting like more diversity within this series. Like we're seeing Athos Black Elf, we're seeing Athos Black Dwarf, and I'm- Oh, good for you! And how was it?